Hey everyone, welcome back to Crypto Cash. Thank you so much again for joining me here. Hope you're having a great day. Taking a look here at Bitcoin, $93,421 as a high. Uh, just set here a moment ago. So this is fantastic, awesome stuff. Uh, what we're gonna do is take a look at a few key factors, um, specific support levels. Um, pretty straightforward here. We can just kind of see on the hourly. There are a couple of important levels we wanna pay attention to, uh, just in case the price were to pull back. So keep in mind, these levels should be utilized as support levels moving forward. The price comes back, we may see a bounce off this 89.7 to 90K range. That seems logical to have a $90,000 support level if we see the price pull back. A lot of emphasis on the word if right now. Bitcoin is just not even giving a uh, giving a hoot. Doesn't care at all about anything. Just taking, taking off, continuing higher. We're seeing tons of money flowing in. So this is awesome stuff. Bitcoin dominance is also at its uh, you know two or three year high, essentially. Uh, my speculation is we're going to probably see somewhere in the range of 70% and then um, probably see that start to taper off. So uh, again, a lot of it depends on many factors. That's purely speculation at this point, but 70% uh, is roughly the uh, the previous high for um, for Bitcoin dominance. And when that shift occurred, we saw a pretty significant run from altcoins. Some altcoins are starting to run right now, don't go wrong. Like uh, there's some significant meme coins and some heavy uh, heavy volume cap coins that are doing pretty well. But uh, the general consensus here is that altcoins still have yet to surge. Um, and again, money's flowing away from altcoins going into Bitcoin for the most part. And we're just seeing that consistent uh, cycle. So let's take a look at liquidation data first and go from there. I do want to say thank you again to everyone who hit the like button yesterday and maybe considers doing so today. We got uh, over uh, like 130 likes, if I'm not mistaken, on just a thousand views. Views. That's pretty awesome. That's a pretty good percentage. Uh, generally speaking, you see a lot lower. So thank you again for just being amazing, amazing viewers. Let's take a look here at the uh, last seven days on the left here. First of all, for liquidation, we can see it's kind of sparse. Uh, 94 to 96,000 is a rough estimate for the slightly heavier areas of concentration there, but it's starting to diminish. In other words, we don't see quite as much as we did recently here. In other words, that 90 to 91,000 range. What I was expecting, honestly, to see that happen last night before the price pulled back. Instead, the price pulled back and then it continued higher. Good news is we were able to get into some nice, healthy shorts here for our community. Uh, we saw Solana 20%, 32% from ICP and 28% from Bitcoin. Again, those are all 5X leverage trades minus Bitcoin. I only ever 10X Bitcoin uh, for leverage. So heads up, that's essentially a good little situation there for us. Uh, let's go back to liquidation Delta and see where we're at. <laughs> Holy crap. Man, you think it's gonna, it's gonna pull back and it just keeps on going. Uh, we're at 35 billion in liquidation long Delta now. So basically just implies there is a tremendous amount of people longing this coin versus shorting this coin. So the general consensus, even though all three of those trades we took yesterday that were profitable were short trades, they were tight, they were safe. We had a trailing stop loss that adjusted lower as the price came down. Um, so again, make sure that you're, you're protecting your investment, but the concept is we got in and out with some quick profit. I don't recommend shorting in general. We just saw that massive overextension at 90,000. It made sense to uh, essentially short the double top, okay? Now, when we take a quick look here at open interest, the concept remains the same. We're seeing consistency here at 90,000 or 80, 89.7. That's that exact level that we saw with that resistance level based on the hourly candlestick closure. So we see the most amount of interest here, open interest in the last 24 to 48 hours, maybe even just say, uh, you know, 72 hours. We're looking at about 80, 89, seven. So 89,700, that's this guy right here, this yellow line. Uh, essentially, you could even consider this as a, um, a bullish rectangle, okay? So awesome stuff, 10 billion liquidation is gone. We'll see what happens with liquidation here soon, but generally, when you see this kind of liquidation get swept, the price should pull back a little bit. I'm not saying you should short 93,000, but the concept here is that 90,000, it would make sense for the price to retest 90,000 just you know, at some point. Uh, it may continue going higher before then, so be careful. But the good news is not a lot of people are shorting uh, Bitcoin, and that just uh, allows for the price to continue to run. So again, everyone's kind of gun shy with good reason. Totally understand it. So SMAs, daily time frame. All good. Nothing has changed here. We're still over 70 on the RSI. And as I mentioned previously, you don't close your long position until you see that level uh, start to come back down past 70. So from a macro perspective, spot bag holding, you do not consider selling Bitcoin. I am super glad that I I, uh, <laughs> I added to my bags pretty heavy in the 50K range. So it's looking looking like a nice, uh, nice 2X there so far on the spot bag, at least on those. Um, let's take a look here at the four hour though. Recognize 
We are still above the 20-day SMA. Again, shorting into that, not necessarily a great idea. Uh, we take a look here at the RSI. It did come down below 70 at the point in which we, we decided to take a short position. So keep in mind, um, you know, we had some confirming factors there to close our long position on the smaller time frames, and that helps. But now that we're back up above it, you keep your long open for at least another 24 to 48 hours. Let the RSI cool back down before you consider securing profits. Uh, money flow index, everything is in really, really good shape. I don't love that the MFI is still tapering off, but uh, that's only because we saw some selling pressure here. And another reason why we shorted too is because you just saw this diminishing volume. As volume starts to, to decrease, the probability of price turning around is pretty high. Uh, while it didn't significantly turn around, it did pull back from about 90K to, I think it was 86, if I'm not mistaken, our take profit target for our short was, uh, yeah, 86,450 for our second target. So um, I was hoping for about 84.5 because that's that local FIB level that th there was a lot of liquidation down there. There still is rather. Um, so just keep in mind that may be a possible reality here if we lose 90K. But for right now, we got to presume the price is going to go up. Stochastic, MACD still converging. We look at the hourly time frame. There's zero reasons to consider um, you know, shorting or closing your long position. While you should probably secure profits as the price goes up if you're in like a higher leverage trade, um, it, it would be important to consider securing profits. Uh, at this point, there's nothing telling us the price is going to turn around. These are all green lights to leave your long position open. These are even green lights to take a long position, but me personally, I don't like to long the top, but who knows where the top is, right? Price discovery is insane. So in the, for the most part, when we're in these situations, you gotta recognize that uh, pretty much anything can happen. So try not to get uh, too crazy here, but generally speaking, things are looking pretty solid here for Bitcoin. I think the easy way to understand it is at 89.7 slash uh, you know, 90K is that local support. As far as how high up the price will go, I can post a playout chart here soon with some updated FIB levels. Generally speaking, when you're in price discovery like this, you take the local high um, for FIB levels and you simply reverse it. In other words, this daily candlestick closure is based on yesterday's high. So 90,000 is the top. Therefore, 96.4 and 99.7 are the two potential areas of consideration for either take profit targets or just you know areas in which the price will pull back. Bitcoin has been hitting its 0.68 FIB levels often. So if we do see a continuation in this run, just like last time, it rejected off its 1.618 FIB level. So that puts us at about 105 as a possibility, okay? So just kind of throwing it out there as far as hypotheticals are concerned. Keep in mind, folks, nobody knows where the top is. If people are uh, you know, specifically telling you it's X, Y, or Z, it is purely hypothetical. All you can really do is use FIB extensions um, and just kind of understand generally where things are gonna go next based on those levels that are consistent in trading, but they're not 100%. So uh, I think the concept here, the, the thing that re remains true is that you want to pay attention at all times here. Don't just set it and forget it. Uh, the important thing, I mean, obviously you can set it and forget it if you set a goal for the trade, right? Like every time I set a trade, I have multiple entries, multiple exit targets. I, that's just kind of how I do it. That's how I've, I've always done it in a fairly successful way. However, some people will just take along and then just you know go to sleep with no stop loss. That's just a terrible idea. If you're going to you know, leave the charts, make sure you have an appropriate stop loss. Move it into profit as you continue into profit and don't get uber greedy. Um, while it is a greedy market right now, so to speak, um, there's no need to be, to be ridiculous because these candle wicks are pretty aggressive and specifically some altcoins are finding, you know, discovering that, that that's, uh, that's a reality, okay? So anyways, cool stuff there. Thanks again so much for watching. Um, last but not least, make sure you take advantage of this uh, benefit here. We're just about to unlock 60K prize pool among the top 20 traders. So awesome volume. Keep up the good work, everybody. Again, just trade as you normally do. Don't try to you know, over trade because you're trying to meet a goal there. But the concept is that they are no KYC or VPN required exchange. Phenomenal exchange for our US and Canadian members. Uh, I will post our playout chart on our Twitter, Telegram, and Discord here shortly. Uh, go ahead and check that out if you haven't already. We'll look forward to seeing the next one. Have a good rest of your day. Take care.